Hello everyone. First and foremost, I hope that everybody is safe and sound at home and you are logging into this Realized Live from, from your home, not from your offices. My name is Dinesh. I lead EQ. Today's subject is Achieving Symphony of Data and, and Applications for Competitive Edge. When you look at business challenges and start to get into product lifecycle management, there is a lot of data that gets created when you are in ideation phase from concepts, analysis, and design. There is a lot of data related to requirements, systems architecture, simulated uh, software, simulated analysis, simulated test, 3D CAD designs, as well as builds of materials, changes, and configuration. As the product goes into the realization state, when you are getting to manufacture that, assemble that, test, and commission that, different kinds of data starts to come in the picture. Generally from MRP systems, ERP systems, MES systems, CRM systems, all kinds of data starts to come into the picture. As the products start to get into the state for utilization, where the products are deployed in the field, customers are operating them, trying to maintain them for utilization and going through retirement. Obviously there is all kinds of data, significant amounts of data as you can see on the screen. But over the past decade, what obviously has happened is, and most of you I'm sure in your own companies, the factories have become smarter, the machines are getting sensorized, the products are getting sensorized, and that's with the advent of that sensorized or big data, it just has exponentially increased the volume of data. Um, any company, when it looks at data, and when it looks at its own assets, what it is actually looking at, for example, is cash, offices, plants, machinery, products, and inventory. These are traditional balance sheet kind of uh, uh, assets. And in, on top of that, you have the, the you know, intellectual property and, and talented people that are also bringing in as the critical assets. But there is a realization now that data indeed is the one of the most critical assets. And therefore, there is a need to harness the power of data for a sustained competitive edge. How do you get there? How do you, in fact, uh, harness this power of data? As shown, as we discussed, the volume of data, variety of data, velocity of data is increasing exponentially. Data across systems is not easily accessible when it is required by the business users. A lot of manual steps are required to transform the data between systems. And data in different systems in different formats, they don't work in harmony. That is the situation that most businesses face. The, what is an end result out of that? The result is reduction in productivity throughout the business, missed opportunities of being first to the market with differentiated offerings, suboptimal customer satisfaction, and slower than desired pace for digital transformation of the business. All of that culminates into a actually unable to achieve, the, achieve or sustain the competitive edge. This is the challenge that businesses face. Um, there is a realization, and I think many of you who are probably on this, uh, in this conference now, and folks such as yourselves and other people in your company are realizing that, uh, that you know, the, the power of data needs to be leveraged, and there are critical requirements for that. First is, the data needs to be made available to the end user in the context of their role. Second is, the digital thread. There is a lot of discussion about digital thread, but the challenge is really how do you establish the digital thread automatically without manual steps that are required in, in between. Um, there is a need for for-purpose apps to simplify the complexity of different systems, providing in-context data, whether it is federated or replicated automatically, and to make sure that that data can be modified by that user in the app and getting transformed and inserted into the systems of record. Uh, there is also a need to legacy systems, to retire those legacy systems responsibly. And obviously with so much of the data that is coming in, uh, it, it, you know, machine learning techniques are becoming far more critical to provide that analytics and BI capability that will give you the critical insight for higher fidelity of decisions. These requirements, we see it everywhere. Many customers talk from that. It is there that those are the requirements. That's exactly what our EQ platform does. EQ is a data as a service platform. It essentially creates a data fabric with connected network of integrated data applications and devices and puts the power of analytics in the hands of end users. EQ is able to connect to any data coming from any application, any format, 
any API at any speed and able to actually put this data fabric together. That platform provides multiple solutions. So if you look at this list here, first and foremost, customers use and continue to use our products to build for purpose apps to reduce the complexity of the various systems and applications that the end users have. They also use our, our EQ platform to integrate data. Um, we connect to all kinds of legacy systems, card systems, big data systems, and so on. We are also able to orchestrate enterprise-wide business processes across systems and across networks, uh, obviously able to federate the data in context of what that user is trying to do. Um, going beyond that, using our platform, many customers, aerospace defense customers, Department of Defense customers, automotive customers, they're able to establish secure collaboration mechanism across networks, partners, and customers using our product. For the past decade plus, we've been able to migrate legacy systems and bring them into new. This is a Siemens conference. So we have been able to migrate all kinds of legacy systems, including Team Center Enterprise, to bring that data into Team Center. We've been doing that for over a decade now. Uh, we have a quite a powerful analytical engine. A lot of you know about EQBI, that is Team Center Reporting Analytics. But beyond that, there is an augmented data analytics offering that EQ has that has quite capable and quite powerful machine learning capabilities inside of that. So it's able to actually perform analysis and give you that nuggets of data and, and insights that, that you may be looking for. That's what the platform does. Um, many of you have probably seen this. One of the offerings of our platform is EQMI. EQMI forms a digital backbone. And as you can see here on the screen from left to right, you will see many of the CARTS products that the, the ones that deal with systems architecture, requirements, getting into software development, simulation and analysis, PLM products like team centers, uh, like Winchill and, and, and so on, as well as ERP systems like SAP and Oracle eBusiness Suite. Uh, we're able to connect to all of these systems. Once these systems come onto the digital backbone and they get connected to the digital backbone through those blue arrows. And blue arrows are nothing but connectors EQ builds these connectors. We use the published APIs from the manufacturer. So when we connect to SAP or Team Center or to IBM Maximo, we use their published APIs to build these connectors. And once you are connected to the backbone, we can do many things with it. First and foremost, you are able to seamlessly integrate data from one system to the next. So for example, you can connect data from doors to Cameo, doors and Cameo to Team Center, Team Center to SAP, Team Center SAP to manufacturing execution systems. So imagine you can traverse this digital backbone with that integrated framework of data. It's absolutely possible. That is what one of the things it does. Second thing you are able to do with that is because we have a powerful data virtualization layer built into that, that allows us to get data. Obviously, as you can see here on the screen, this data is coming in completely different formats in these applications. Our data virtualization layer neutralizes that and presents that data as if it's coming from one system. Advantages are incredible. You are able to bring that data, publish that as an API, and bring that into a for-purpose app. I'm going to walk you through a demonstration of that later on today in this presentation. Several other advantages you have. Because we use the APIs to build those blue arrows, we're able to leverage the access control logic and security logic that is published by that manufacturer. So we are able to leverage that completely. We are able to leverage all the custom object models. We're able to leverage all the dynamic attributes as is, as if an end user is logging into those systems. Another thing you are able to do is, is you are able to synchronize old systems to new systems. And once you are able to synchronize that, you have an ability, you have a possibility, first of all, to be able to retire those legacy systems without disrupting the business. That's the things that we do. That's what the digital backbone does. Um, another thing that you are able to do with it is obviously you are able to connect to this data in different systems, bring it together in this in-memory virtualized cube, and present it as you can see at the top of that screen, which are KPIs, dashboards, which are highly interactive, highly intuitive, that is EQBI, which is the same as Team Center Reporting Analytics. 
And that is why the slogan there, it says, is digital backbone and actionable insight, because the top perspective on those particular metrics is not just the pretty pictures, but you're able to interrogate that data, find out why there the problems are, and keep drilling into that data to the level that is required. This is what we do. So as I mentioned, I'm gonna walk you through an actual demonstration now to show how EQ as a platform is able to connect the dots and kind of bring this data from different systems working in harmony. Uh, what you're seeing here on the screen, this is about an MBAC app, Model-Based Systems Engineering. We started to work on this last year and uh, we presented that to a number of customers starting with Northrop Grumman last year. And every customer that we deal with, doesn't matter the industry, what they're really after is to uh, establish a digital thread across different systems, uh, be able to move data between systems without any manual intervention, and then have an ability to visualize this digital thread and understand the health of that digital thread. Uh, and then have a bunch of different metrics to actually show you the, the health and take actions associated with that. That's what we were doing. Um, so the, in here, you will see on this digital backbone, there are essentially seven different products or seven different applications that are working in tandem for this MBAC. This is related to software or firmware. Doors, next generation, is where the requirements are captured. Cameo is where you are actually capturing the entire functional architecture of that particular system. You have Jira and Bitbucket where software is managed, Artifactory is managing the final release products and the final packages of that. Team Center is the one that actually is managing the configured BOM, including the firmware in it. And Primavera P6 is used as an overall scheduling engine. So what eCube is doing is actually to orchestrate information going across these systems on behalf of that user behind the scenes, establishing the digital thread. And we have created this app in Mendix and put EQ BI as part of that to show you the health of that particular dashboard or particular um, MBSC digital thread. Uh, you can see that the project gets kicked off. Uh, once the requirements get completed, it, the data is transferred basically to Cameo and to Team Center. Once the design is complete, at that time in Cameo, that the data actually goes into Jira, Bitbucket, sprints are planned. Uh, software skeleton is created. Once the sprint is completed, the, the, the final product is actually gets finished in Artifactory, and EQ then moves that to Team Center and connects the dot across. This is how the application looks. The user logs into it. Uh, this is a Mendix app created by us. This is EQ BI. It tries to show you the various dashboards and try to show you the maturity of the different statuses in the system. I'm gonna move forward and we are going to switch to Doors NG. So systems engineers are working in Doors Next Generation. This is an autonomous vehicle. They are picking up four different kinds of uh, requirements there. Once the user clicks on this MBAC Sync button, the data is actually automatically moved to Team Center in the background and is also getting replicated inside of Cameo so that the systems architecture folks can actually start to tie the functional block diagrams to that. How do we do this using EQ platform? This is EQ MI. This is the digital backbone, okay? And there is just a couple of things that I wanna show you here really quick. As you see here on the screen, everything in blue are the various connections that are established in EQ MI. And then there is another product, EQ TM for a transformation modeler. The green blocks are coming from Doors NG. The purple blocks are coming from Cameo. And all they are doing actually is to try and map what data from doors would go to what data specifically in Cameo. As you can see, it's very graphical, very intuitive as to what needs to take place. And going forward, what takes place is that that particular map gets integrated into this particular step. This is EQ MI again, where you are establishing just a regular pipeline, a logical pipeline to build that interface, to bring data in Cameo and pass that on to Primavera and Team Center. The maps get consumed here. That's how TM and MI are integrated tightly. Another product comes in the picture with us is called API Gateway. This is kind of a core infrastructure element. The Mendix app is the one that actually calls on to API Gateway, which calls on to BI, MI, and these are the various systems that are connected in the background. 
So, API gateway, the eCube TM for the transformation maps, and the eCube MI with its processing pipelines, you are able to create REST and OData services and expose those APIs which are consumed in a Mendix app. Okay? That's what takes place. When you go to Mendix, and in Mendix you have a concept of microflows. So, we're going to open up a microflow here on the screen, which are a set of steps that you take when you are building this kind of a for purpose app. And you'll see here a block that says call eCube MI REST APIs. And this is basically the post call to that REST API. This is how those pieces get connected. Okay, so you are now going from Mendix app, going through the REST APIs, going to the API gateway, calling on to those particular maps and bringing that data into that application. We switch to Cameo now. This is where the systems architecture is going to take place. They have put together a requirements uh, diagram on the screen. Obviously, they have built a functional diagram as well, which I will fast forward to. They will bring the requirements together. They are maturing those requirements or refining them further. And what they are wanting to do, obviously, is to take the functional block and see which one of these functional elements satisfy those requirements. That's what those arrows are doing. Once that is done, that data is upon committing. I mean, once you do this, you will commit this thing to Team Center, not Team Center, but Teamwork Cloud. And that is the trigger that MI will take to pass that data on to Jira and Bitbucket and those kinds of systems. So when you go to Bitbucket, this is where source code is controlled. Of course, EQ has connectors to all kinds of uh, source control systems, including SVN and others. And this is the skeleton code that gets automatically created. MI orchestrate this, uh, this entire process. Uh, all these steps in Jira for sprint planning, they are already brought in here by MI from Cameo. As soon as that information, the systems architecture model was committed to the Teamwork Cloud. Uh, the end user is not involved. MI is doing this orchestration behind, essentially establishing the digital thread across. Okay, as you move forward, this is JFrog. This is where finally when the source code is compiled and a final package is created, as you can see there, the package gets established. Again, MI orchestrates this process and syncs that data back with Team Center as well. How do you visualize this digital thread? This is now inside of the, the Mendix app. This is EQ BI product. And uh, what it is going to do is it's going to show you the digital thread um, very, very visually here on the screen. So, if you look at this, it tells you all of these artifacts, what they are. There's the firmware, there is requirements, there is model blocks. It tells you where they are coming from. There is Team Center, Artifactory, Doors, Cameo, like that. So this is one of the ways to visualize it. And there is obviously a very graphical way of looking at that, where we have a fully integrated hyperbolic tree view. This is Team Center, this is, uh, this is Doors, this is Cameo, and so on. So you can start to take a look at that digital thread, or you can expand that entire digital thread, traverse it, find where that thread is broken, and try to take actions. This is fully integrated in the product as well. Um, now we will go forward towards uh, when we are actually looking at integrating all of this data back into Team Center. Uh, this, you know, there's a, quite a bit of detail involved, but this particular graphic uh, graphical view is showing between one version and the next, what changed in that digital thread. So they were working on a prior version with a certain model. The model has to be changed because of new requirements, and that's what was happening there. Switching to Team Center, we will get into Team Center where all of these things are tied together. And inside of Team Center, you can see the steering subsystems. This is the Cameo systems architecture functional block diagram that is brought in. This is the relationships that are brought in. These are created by MI, again, behind the scenes. And it's not just the high-level requirements. You'll see here in a moment, as soon as you open that, the entire next level of requirements are also brought together. All of this has happened on behalf of that user behind the scenes by MI. This is the final uh, zip file of the software that is brought there. So this is how you are able to actually tie the pieces together. This is the revision B of that. And this is where I will stop. As you saw in the MBAC demonstration, we were able to show how eCube is able to connect the data 
and form a symphony of data and applications across those seven applications. This is what the product is capable of doing. It is able to go across the entire digital thread, not just the firmware and the first part of the digital thread. That is how we are helping companies accelerate their digital transformation. Thanks for watching. We have a virtual area for our company. Please uh, visit us. There is more information available on it. Again, guys, stay safe. Thank you.